Caramelized onions are delicious on pizza, but they tend to burn. One solution, don't use them as a topping, use them as a sauce. And then if you want, you can tweak the other flavors to give yourself a French onion soup inspired pizza. It's way better than it sounds. First thing is to peel and chop some garlic. I tried it without garlic and it didn't taste quite enough like pizza. The garlic makes it taste like pizza, set aside. One big onion will only give you enough sauce for one pizza because it's going to cook down a lot. I've got a sweet onion onion of Idalia, but you could use any onion and there's no shame in adding some sugar to it once you've got it cooked down. Normally people do like thin slices or wedges for caramelized onions, but those would be slimy and messy as a pizza sauce. They'd sliver out onto your lip. I'm dicing this basically as fine as I can. To me, this dice gets you the perfect middle ground between long ribbons and a smooth puree. I tried the puree too and it was just like baby food. A wide pan on high heat all the way high, a little oil and in they go. Stir non stop. Yes, caramelized onions have to cook kind of slowly, otherwise parts of them will burn before the rest turn soft and amber. But with this much fresh onion in the pan, the cooking is going to be slow no matter how high your heat is. There's just so much water to evaporate. I find as long as I keep my onions moving constantly, high heat is A-OK, -okay, at least in the beginning phases. We're coming up on like five minutes now, and you can start to see a little brown forming around the edge of some pieces, and a little brown fond building on the the bottom of the pan. At this point, you can either turn down the heat and keep going more slowly, or you can deglaze just a little bit. Just enough to release brown stuff from the pan and to rehydrate those edges of the pieces before they burn. You do it this way, and you can keep going at high heat all the way to the end. Stir until you're afraid it's going to burn, deglaze a little some more. You could use plain water, yeah, I'm using white wine. I also tried this with beef stock to double down on the French onion soup theme. That was a little much for me. The pizza really tasted like soup, but it was good. I kind of wish I'd done half water or stock and half white wine. All white wine, like I did this time, was a little strong for me at the end. Though if you didn't use any wine, I'd suggest a little splash of vinegar at the end. It's a pizza sauce. It needs some acidity. When all the pieces are silky and amber-colored, you're done. Because we started with a fine dice and used high heat in a wide pan, this only took 15 minutes. Caramelized onions often take two or three times as much time. I'm going to turn off my heat, throw in my garlic, and just cook it for a couple of minutes. I want it to be pretty fresh tasting. This is when I might add a pinch of sugar if I wasn't using a sweet onion, by the way, or maybe some balsamic vinegar, and a little more liquid just to make sure I have a saucy, spreadable consistency for the pizza. Pizza dough, my standard recipe. It's in the description. With a wet dough like this, I like to stretch it when it's cold, straight out of the fridge. As soft and supple as my new mattress from the sponsor of this video, Helix Sleep. Hey, big news, we're moving into a new house. So far, our new king-size Helix is the only piece of furniture. Believe it or not, it came here via normal shipping in this box. Whole thing in that box. I'll show you. Helix is a premium mattress-in-a-box company. You take their quiz online, tell them how you and any bedmates like to sleep, firmness level, etc., and Helix matches you. We got the dusk. We slept great on the first Helix we got at our old house. I can already tell we're going to sleep great on this one. And there's no hiring movers to bring over your mattress. It ships to you like this. Free shipping in the U.S. And it is a real, very high-quality mattress. It is simply vacuum-compressed. All you do is break the seal and whoa, 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 there we go. This thing is massive, but they have smaller sizes too, of course. And firmness and support levels for every kind of tired back. It comes with a 10-year warranty and a 100-night trial. If you don't like it, they'll refund you and pick it up for free. Do us both a favor, click my link in the description, or go to helixsleep.com slash ragusia. Save up to two hundred dollars off your helix sleep mattress plus two free pillows helix sleep.com slash ragusia save up to 200 bucks on your mattress thank you helix now i am baking this pizza using my method where i grill it directly on my oven grates i have found an easier way to do this i'm going to show you right now a great position near the top element and i will turn on my broiler aka grill full blast right before i start shaping my dough that's all the preheat time a broiler needs for this method you've got to roll the pizza out tossing does not work it's got to be pretty uniform in thickness all over. Roll that wider than you want it because it's going to snap back a bit. And where I used to avoid flouring my dough while shaping, this time I'm flouring it quite liberally, especially right at the end. Because what I'm going to do is roll this gently around the tip of my rolling pin. Don't want 
it to stick to itself. Do it gently. Now, instead of flinging the dough over the hot grates, I can simply place it down and unroll it like a scroll. So much easier. Make sure the ends aren't drooping down too far. Hook them around the grates. Remember, the grates are hot. Under the broiler this goes, close the oven up, and you just blast side one until brown. If you get big bubbles like that, I recommend popping them with your tongs. The flour insulates the dough a little bit, so you might not get super dramatic color, but you also get some toasted flour flavor. A little burning on the bottom of pizza is desirable, I think. Flip that over with your tongs, and this is the side we're going to top. Here's our minced caramelized onions. As with any pizza sauce, a little goes a long way. This is a thin food. If I feel I don't have quite enough sauce, then I usually have it exactly right. A heavy scattering of Parmesan really helps to make this taste like pizza, then my melting cheese. I'm using a blend. This is Gruyere, which is what you traditionally melt on French onion soup. I tried using only this. Great flavor, but it splits really bad at pizza baking temperatures. It squeezes out all its grease. I got much better results when I blended it with my favorite mozzarella for pizza, which is this brand of whole milk low moisture string cheese. You'd want to get at least eight ounces, like a quarter kilo, grated or chopped up for a pizza this size. You might not use it all, but you'd want it handy just in case. Slide that back under the top element, close her up, and cook until melty brown to your liking. This is just such an effective method for getting crispy browned pizza without any special equipment. I really believe in it. But you could, of course, bake this recipe on a pizza stone or some such. Pull that out straight to a cooling rack. This will keep the bottom dry while the pizza cools. I picked some fresh thyme earlier. I'll scatter that across and let it cook a little in the residual heat. Tarragon would also go nice with the onions, but you could go with a standard pizza herb like basil. Using a lot of flour on the dough also reduces the unnervingly smooth skin-like texture that I used to get on the bottom of the pizza using the oven grate method. Now it's more of a traditional, slightly powdery texture, and I love the texture of the onions in that. Caramelizing onions doesn't just get you sweetness. It gets you this silky mouthfeel. I gotta say, that flavor combination is pretty dynamite. Credit goes to my wife, Lauren. I was talking about wanting to make an onion pizza, and she was like, French onion soup pizza! And I was like, really? But now I'm like, yeah, really. <laughs>